this lesson we are going to be creating a spreadsheet and within the spreadsheet content we're going to be selecting it from a google apps script and pulling that content back into the script. So it's a completely separate script. It's a standalone script. And when we run the function, we get the contents that is contained within the spreadsheet. And then the second part of the lesson is where we're creating a web app, and that's using the do get method and the create template from file. So we're creating an HTML file that we're outputting the contents into the web app. And the contents that we're outputting is actually coming from the Google script as a variable and we're outputting it into the HTML code of the web app. So it's all coming up in this lesson. Go ahead and log into your Google account and then within the Google Drive, if you go to drive.google.com forward slash drive forward slash my drive, select the new button in the top left hand corner and this will provide a drop down where you can select to create a brand new Google spreadsheet. So we are going to need a Google spreadsheet as we're going to be outputting that content from the spreadsheet into the web app. So let's call it data contents and populate some content in there. So we can have some headers as well. So first, last, status, ID, and then I'll add in some random values in there. So this can be a Boolean value and this can be a numeric value. And then just so that uh, we do have some data, I'll drag this down so that we have different names there. And then also for the status of true, we can have some true and some false. So we have some distinction between. So I'm just po populating some random data that we can use within the spreadsheet and output the content. I'm going to bold the top of it. So once you've got some content within a spreadsheet, you're ready to access the web application using the Google Apps Script. So that's available under the Extensions tab in the top menu of the spreadsheet. And you can select Apps Script in order to create a bound script. So in this case, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be creating a brand new script and then linking it to the spreadsheet. So this way we can have different data spreadsheets if we need and we, all we have to do is update the ID. So in order to do that, you can go back to Drive and under New and selecting under More, select Google Apps Script and this will open up the Google Apps Script Editor so that we can write some Google Apps Script code. So I'll call this data output and we'll call it data output one. So we'll rename the Google apps to data output one. And then within the editor, we're going to connect it to that spreadsheet and then output the data. So this will just be output data and using the spreadsheet app. So using the spreadsheet app, we're going to open by ID and then pull in the ID of the spreadsheet that we want to use. So let's select the ID into the Google Apps Script. So going back to the spreadsheet, the ID is available within the URL here at the top. So you can just select the URL and bring it into your editor and copy and paste the ID into the editor. So that way we've got the ID object. And once we've selected the Sheets object, we want to select a sheet from that object. So then we can use the SS, which is going to be referencing the Google spreadsheet that we've got here opened on the other tab here at the top. And selecting that, we need to select a sheet. So there's a number of methods that are available now to us. So we can get sheet by name, we can get sheet ID, we can get all of the sheets. So we're going to actually be selecting the sheet by name as we want to reference a particular sheet, I'm going to call this data one. So renaming the sheet, instead of just calling it sheet one, we're calling it data one. So this is going to be the name of the sheet that we're accessing and sheet name. So let's uh, call it data one. And having it as variables here at the top is going to make it a whole lot easier to make updates to it. If we want to select different sheets, if we want to select Google different spreadsheets and so on. So for now, let's make sure that we have the sheet object and you can do this by using the logger log. So this is a way that you can output it within the execution log and you can see what object you have when you're referring to sheet. So let's go ahead and save that. And now we're ready to run the output data. Once we run output data, 
then what we can do is we're going to also have to accept permissions, but we're going to see that within the log, we should have the sheet object. And that means once we've got the sheet object, then we can select the range and then we can get the values that are contained within the range and output those. So let's run the code. And the first time you run it, it is going to ask you to accept permissions as you're using your Google account to run code accessing documents. So you need to accept permissions in order for the script to be able to access the contents. And this is the account that I'm using for this demonstration. And it's going to give you this error message that says Google hasn't verified the app because this app obviously is not submitted as we're just creating it. So going into the advanced option here on the left hand side. And we can continue using this account with this app. So we've got the data output one, which is going to match the name here. So just select that last button at the bottom, the last link at the bottom, and it'll give you more details about the permissions that you're accepting. There's also the app name multiple times that's going to be available within the pop-up screen. And there's also information you can read more about it. And if you do ever want to remove permissions, you can select under your Google account. So this will bring you to myaccount.google.com forward slash permissions and give you an opportunity to remove the data output app that we're just applying permissions to. So once you're okay and you've read through all of this information, go ahead and allow it. So that's going to authorize the app and allow us to make that connection. So then run the function one more time and you should see within the execution log the sheet object. So once we do have the sheet object, we can get the data range. So the next part of selecting the content to output is selecting the range that we want to use. So this is contained within a data range. So we've got the sheet object and under get, so we can get a, a lot of the different properties. And if we just want to get all of the available data, we can use get data range. And when you are using a specific range, you also have an option to specify the range, which we're going to look at in the later lessons. So once we've got the range that we want to use, then we're able to get the data and the data values. So selecting the range object and get values. So if get values is the method that we're trying to use. And now instead of outputting the sheet object, let's output the data that we've retrieved back within this function. So run the function again. And now we've got the data. And notice that the rows of the content are nested within the main array. So it returns it back as an array with nested items within it. So in order to output it into a page, we can use the do get function. And the do get is the function that's built in that's going to automatically run the web app whenever the get request is made to that web app. So we can construct some HTML to create some HTML output. So using the HTML service, we're going to create template from file. And then it's going to be expecting a parameter, which is going to be a string. So this is going to be the file that we want to use to output the content with. So selecting by the string name, and we're going to create this. So we'll just call it data one. And then for do get, we need to return the HTML content and evaluate it in order to output it on the page. So going into the files on the left hand side, click files plus HTML, and then here name the file to match with what you have as data one. So you don't have to include the HTML at the end. So this is understood. It's going to automatically look for a file called data one that's going to match within the files of the Google Apps script. And then you can flip through the two of them in order to select the different outputs. So going into the data one, We'll first just output a value of he hello world and set up our web app. And then we'll dynamically pull in some content from the Google app script into the web app. So once we've created the do get function, we're ready to deploy the web app and get an actual working web URL. In order to do this, you can go up to the top button 
the blue button in this case in the top right hand side where it's got the deploy and you've got a few options here in the drop down so the one that we want to use is the new deployment so just go ahead and click that on the left hand side where it says select type select the web app from the drop down and then the description for the web app and i'll just call it data output which account we're using to execute the web app so we can execute it as the current Google account that I'm using, or you can select it to access for the user accessing the web app. So in this case, I'm gonna stick with this one and just because I want to open up the web app for anyone to have access to it. So keeping the execution, so we don't have to have any logins or any permissions, we can execute as using this Google account and then the web app will be authorized to run using your account data. So who has access to it? So within here, you've got an option to yourself, anyone with a Google account, or anyone. And if you leave it to anyone, that means anyone with the web URL is gonna be able to access the data. You can also restrict it to yourself. So that means that in order to access it, it has to be that same account. You have to be logged in and going in the web browser. Anyone with a Google account, so that's anyone that's logged into their Google account, can see the contents. And if you're working within an organizational workspace, you're going to have a fourth option to only allow people that are within the organization that have a Google account. So for now, I'm going to keep it at anyone. And this is just going to open up a web application URL that anyone that has that URL is going to be able to access. So go ahead and deploy it. And once you've deployed it, it's gonna give you a deployment ID as well as a web app URL. So this is gonna be the location of where your script is gonna get executed in the web. And that's gonna give you a full web address. And this can be accessed by anyone that has this full web address. You can go ahead and click it and run it. And you should see the contents of the HTML file being output in the page. And then as well, you can copy that web URL. So there is a difference between the executable. So the executable is the one that you've actually deployed and that you've committed within this instance. And that's going to have an extension at the end of it of a forward slash EXEC. If you're working with the development, so if we come in here and if we make a change to Hello World and we save it or a change to the Google script and then we refresh it, we're not gonna see that change take place. So we have to redeploy it in order to see the change. And in order to test it while you're developing it, so as you're making changes so that you can see the changes in real time, go down to deploy test deployments, select that option. And this is gonna give you for the web app, a URL and at the end of it, that URL is gonna have dev. So any changes that you're making will directly change within the dev version. For the dev version, it's only gonna be the accounts that this app is shared with that it's gonna have access to it. So you can't open it up and not everyone is gonna be able to access your developer version. So the developer version is the one that you should be using in order to develop your web application. So once you've set up and you've got the web application up and running, let's pass some code through to the application itself. So we'll get the value for hello world. We'll create a string on the Google script side of it within the server side, and then we'll pass that value through. So passing it into the HTML object, this is gonna be the value. So just call it my string. And then let's set that to hello world. And actually we'll set it to hello world five so that we can distinguish between the content that we already had on the page. So in order to bring that value through, we can select it and that's gonna be on the HTML file. It's gonna be known as the just my string. So because it's contained within the HTML object that's being constructed. So let's go into the data and instead of writing the word, we're gonna break into the scriptlet and evaluate the results of the variable in the scriptlet and then break back out of it, back into the Java, into the HTML code. So save that and pop over to the dev side. And now we see whatever value we have that's contained within the string value is actually being output into the web page. 
So it's passing through the value from the server side into a variable called my string, and then we can break into the Google script side and pull that string value out. So if we make any changes to the string itself and go back into the code, that's going to be reflected within the web page. So with the explanation mark, so the difference between the explanation mark and without the explanation mark, so when we remove it, and if I update the string value, so let's do string value of hello world seven, we notice that it still works. So the difference between having the explanation mark and not having the explanation mark is because this the explanation mark forces the scriptlets. So it avoids the contextual escaping, and this is important if your script is sending HTML contents into the scripts. So you want the insert, the exact, or the specified value. And if you just need to have the output, so in this case we're using a string, we don't need to use the explanation mark. So if, for instance, this was hello world seven, and we had the whole HTML in there, and save that, and then let's uh, remove out the H1 from it, and save that as well and then we refresh, we're gonna get the full HTML being output, so it's not gonna render it. If we use the explanation mark, go back into the dev side, it's gonna actually render it out as HTML. So typically, when I am using it, I do include the explanation mark, but you don't have to if you're just outputting a string value. If you do want to force the printing of the scriptlets, then you can do it that way in order to render it out. So in the next lesson, we're going to be putting this together and outputting the contents from the spreadsheet into the web app. So that's coming up next. So for now, before you continue to the next lesson, go ahead and set up your spreadsheet, create a Google script, connect to that spreadsheet with the Google script, make sure that you can get all of the data into the log, and then also create your web app using the do get method. And you can use the create template from file method as well. And we're gonna be covering some different ways to output content in the upcoming lessons. But for now, try out the HTML service with the creating the template from file. You can create a file name and then output that file. And this is just regular front end code that's outputting within the web app. So try it out to get more familiar with what you can do with Google Apps Script.